having developed for you some evidence on the costs and benefits of expanding public insurance, I'd like now to turn to the topic of how that evidence might inform public policy and what our experience was in trying to bring that evidence to bear in the policymaking process. The message that I hope you took from the previous topics is that the effects of expanding a program like Medicaid are likely to be manifold. They're going to affect the cost in terms of increased utilization. They're going to have many different types of benefits, some of which we see within the first two years and some potential benefits that we don't. And that paints for policymakers a much more nuanced picture of what the program can and does accomplish than what you might have seen in the debate beforehand. How policymakers weigh that evidence is up to what public policy priorities are. So we can say that Medicaid alone seems insufficient within two years to dramatically improve the management of chronic conditions like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. Why is that? Well, there are many steps in between gaining access to insurance and having those outcomes improved. Imagine a person gains insurance and then has to go to the doctor, have a condition like high blood pressure diagnosed, be prescribed an appropriate medication for that high blood pressure, fill the prescription, take it regularly as directed consistently for blood pressure to improve. Somewhere along that causal chain, health wasn't produced in the population we were looking at. It's not clear why that was, and it's certainly a topic for future research, but it might suggest to policymakers that the Medicaid program that was studied in our situation was not achieving the goals that it was hoping to in terms of improving the access to disease management for that particular low-income population. It suggests the opportunity for innovation it highlights the importance of other inputs into healthcare, such as the environment, access to healthy lifestyles, et cetera. So this offers us, I think, the opportunity to learn a lot more about what the program is doing in partnership with state governments. One of the really important things of fielding the Oregon Health Insurance Experiment was the cooperation of state policymakers. They, of course, had in mind, first and foremost, the well-being of their beneficiaries. They didn't design a lottery so that we could do a study. They used a lottery because they thought it was the most fair way to allocate scarce slots in their Medicaid program. They didn't want to use a first-come, first-serve method because that would advantage populations that had the most access to information, maybe who had internet access or were most highly educated or tied into other social programs. So the lottery was really designed to make sure that all Oregonians had equal opportunity to gain access to the insurance program. The fact that it created an opportunity for a lottery is something that researchers were eager to take advantage of and that the state worked as much as possible within the bounds of absolutely prioritizing the well-being of its population to facilitate. And I don't think all policymakers would necessarily have that priority. I think it provides a lot of information for people in Oregon, but also for people in other states. And we should all be grateful to the state policymakers for making that possible. I hope that under expansions under the ACA or insurance innovations, either in Medicaid or Medicare, there are opportunities for researchers to partner with policymakers. Think about a policy that's being rolled out in stages. Maybe you're trying a new ACO program or accountable care organization. Maybe there's a reform to the payment system through a public insurance program. If that's going to be rolled out in stages, a partnership between researchers and policymakers could ensure that it's rolled out in such a way that it facilitates a really high quality evaluation to generate even more evidence for policymakers. That evidence ideally informs the policymaking process but unfortunately is often interpreted through the lens of people's predispositions about the program. It was interesting to see reactions to the Oregon study where policymakers who were in favor of Medicaid expansions could draw on some of the findings to say, see, Medicaid improves depression, Medicaid reduces financial strain. Policymakers who were against expansion of Medicaid could say, see, Medicaid expansion doesn't save money. It costs money. People use the emergency department more. So people's interpretation of the study was very much flavored by their ideas about whether Medicaid expansion was good in and of itself. That said, I think our study really did help eliminate two extreme views of the Medicaid program's effects. The unduly optimistic view of the program says Medicaid is a wonderful program. It covers people in a more efficient way. It gets them out of the emergency room 
into the doctor's office. It improves the management of diseases. It improves health outcomes by so much and the efficiency with which care is delivered by so much that it will actually save money even within the first two years. I think our study unfortunately dispels that view. When you expand Medicaid, it costs money. People use more health care. They use the emergency department more. They use doctor's offices more. They use hospitals more. So policymakers need to build in a budget to cover that expansion population if they choose to expand. I think our study also dispels the unduly pessimistic view of the program. The unduly pessimistic view would say Medicaid is a terrible program. Beneficiaries have worse outcomes and higher mortality rates. It costs a lot of money. It doesn't get them access to higher quality care. It doesn't pay providers enough. It costs a ton of money and it's just wasted because people are no better off. I think our study dispels that view as well. Beneficiaries are clearly better off when they have Medicaid than when they were uninsured. They're more financially secure, mental health improves, self-reported physical health improves, access to care improves, and people report higher quality care and use of preventive care that's consistent with public policy priorities. So we can eliminate the view that Medicaid is all benefit and no cost, and we can eliminate the view that Medicaid is all cost and no benefit. That leaves policymakers with the much tougher decision of weighing the costs against the benefits. The benefits to the program might be higher or lower than the benefits of another public policy, expanding education, building highways. You could lower costs and make tax rates lower, and that might benefit the economy by more. It gives policymakers information about the costs and benefits, but doesn't tell them how those fit in with policy priorities. That said, I do think that our study did change the debate a little bit about whether expanding Medicaid was good or bad, and all of the evidence that many uh, researchers have brought to bear, not just the Oregon study, which is my favorite, but lots of other studies that have developed evidence, have helped dispel those extreme views of the program. And we saw less of a debate after a lot of this evidence came out about whether Medicaid was killing people off or not, and more of a debate about whether alternatives might be better? What about a private insurance plan? What about catastrophic coverage? How do we value improvements in mental health? How do we value improvements in self-reported health? I hope that the evidence that the research community has brought to bear can let policymakers make decisions about expansions based on the evidence on hand and about how different program choices affect policy priorities. I hope that these studies and the body of research generated by the research community gives policymakers the information they need about both the costs and the benefits of Medicaid as they're wrestling with the future of this public policy program.